All right, that ought to hold it. Um, this thing works perfectly. The tailpiece is going to get hung up back there, but you can tell when it, when we break the 90 degree mark there, or the, the 12 o'clock mark, you know that we got an open. There's your key again. All right. Before I begin picking these, I like to figure out the best way to tension them. And when we look at these, uh, they, there's several different key ways we can mess around with. On this one, we've got a piece of warding right in the center, which is going to prevent us from using the bottom of the keyway with our pick. So if we can't get down with our pick, we may as well get down with our tensioner. If we take the tensioner and put them up in the top, a top of the keyway tensioning, then we're going to have to work around them up there to get around those pins. And sometimes getting behind your tensioner to reach that first pin can be a little bit tricky. So why, why give that extra variable when we don't have to? So let's find a good width here. I'm going to try the medium one, see if that works. That ought to work. All right. I'm going to reach around like this with my finger to tension so you get an idea of how much tension I'm putting on this thing. Now I've drawn a mark right here. So if and when we get a fault set, you'll know immediately because those lines won't be perfectly lined up anymore. You see a misalignment. All right, the first thing we want to do, now remember, this is full of pins. The springs are pushing all the pins now, and all the pins are blocking the shear line. We want to change that. We only want one at a time to block the shear line. Now, we could go in there, and we could just go ahead and start single pin picking and f get them in order until finally we get a fault set. And at that point, the real picking job begins, because at that point, the lock will really start talking to us, telling us what to do. Um, there's a way to cheat, though, to get a, real, a bit of a a fast start. And that is, we'll use a rake. We're going to take the rake and let him do that initial hard work, so a little, very light tension, and we're just going to rake in and out until we get a fault set. When we get a fault set, we know that one of those security pins is caught in the shear line. If we get a fault set. I don't know for sure that we will here. Let me try a little bit thinner rake. I'll try this guy. It's 15 thousandths because we got some curve there. It was giving me a little trouble getting that 25,000th rake up inside of there. I notice I'm just using a variation up and down, raking in and out. And we may or may not get a fault set. Doesn't matter. It always pays off sometimes to try to get ahead. We're not going to get it this time, I don't think. Nope, not going to get it. All right, no problem. I'm going to release all my tension, recock it, and we're just going to start fresh. All right, I'm going to use a 25,000 standard or short hook or standard hook. I'm going to slide them all the way in, apply a little tension, and then start looking for a binding pin. And if I don't find one, I'll apply more tension. Okay, now I'm not finding anything. In fact, let me change picks as well. 15,000, same pick, but a little thinner to help me get around that curve. All right, a little heavier tension to force that first pin to bind. And there he is, pin two. I felt a click. Okay, I'm on the last pin. He does not want, there we go, got a click. The last pin had fallen down again. And notice now I've got a fault set. The lines are they're misaligned a little bit. That tells me I'm probably hung up on a spool pin. Now watch what happens. Now the fun really begins. Now we're really lock picking. I'm going to apply heavy tension on the tensioner, and I'm going to put the pick on each of the pins and give a little flex. And as it happens, see that bouncing right there? That tells me I'm caught up on a spool. So pin number one is definitely a spool pin. So let me get lined up on him, try to do this through the camera. Now notice it's, the line is now no longer misaligned because I'm forcing that spool through the shear line. Now it's actually aligned in the opposite direction as I force that spool up through the, spool pin, uh, through the shear line. And now look what's happened. I've lost the faults set. And that's because now I'm probably hung up on a standard pin, which doesn't have that narrow weight. Now again, I'm lightening up on my tension just a little bit so that I don't overset. And I'm looking for a binding pin. All oh, these are springy and I'm back on pin five. He's the only binder. So I'm gonna line up the pick perfectly with him and try to ease him up. And there may be other pins that fall. Don't worry about it. 
I, I heard a minor click. Keep looking. Pin five still. Okay, I heard the click. Lost the fault set. But pin one is not is definitely picked. So I picked them out of sequence. Doesn't matter. We're well on the way and we know we've got one spool pin beat. Okay, there was another spool pin, pin four. And now, get my hand out of there so it's focused. We again have a misalignment here telling me we're on another spool pin. So let's find him. Pin one is still okay. Pin two is giving me very slight feedback. Let's keep looking just in case. It is pin two. Notice we're getting counter rotation. Okay, got a click and now again we've lost our fault set. So let's keep looking. We're probably hung up on another standard pin, but we've beat two spool pins. So we're ahead of the game here a little bit. Okay, again, pin four and I'm back into a fault set. Now we got to find that third spool pin. Where are you, you devil? This is a point not to get excited and start overdoing things. Okay, I'm, I'm on pin two, it looks like. He looks like he, he might have popped back down. So let's notice how we're getting counter rotation. Come on. Lighten up on the tension. Come on. Let me get him lined up a little better there. Again, I've got him now. I'm on, a, on a, yet a, another spool pin because we are not perfectly aligned. It's not a standard pin. We're on another spool pin. Let's just find him. Looking for counter rotation. There it is. Pin two. Pop back down. Okay, this is a little trickier than I thought. No wonder William said this is going to pick, be a fun pick. Okay, we've lost our uh, spool pin. We're on another standard pin, or at least the fat part of a spool. And there we go. So that was pin five. All right, guys, there you go. Let's go ahead and gut this thing and see what kind of fun is inside of it. We're, I know this is a long video, but a lot of you guys are beginning lock picking, and you keep asking a lot of these questions. So this is a good chance to try to answer some. All right, um, I need a pinning tray. I need a screwdriver. I've got a key so I can lock him back. And I need, maybe not this guy, but one just like him. No, he'll work. Okay, I take that tailpiece off. And now we need that key. I'm going to turn him to 90 degrees. So the pins are now located on this side. And then the driver pins are located along the top. I need a follower. And I need a split tail follower like that. And let's see what we got. That's exactly what I want. Just shove them through there. And there you go. There are your six pins. Let's find out if this was intended as a challenge now. I don't think it was. I'll be darned. Look at that. I'm sorry. Yes, it was, too. It didn't act like it. This acted like a standard pick. These are all serrated. One, two, and three are serrated. And number five is serrated. Six and four are smooth. The serrations in this are... Let me back this up so I can get the focus to work right. The serrations in here are not very sharp. Pretty smooth. So I think that probably explains why we weren't getting a lot of that... Okay, standard. All standards. Again, this explains why we weren't getting any weird crunching resulting from those serrations. It just didn't pay off to do that. And let's see what we got here. All right, pin one. Okay, we knew he was a spool, and sure enough, spool. Number two, standard. 
three is a spool. Four is a spool, but a different spool. It's a little bit longer than the others. I'll give you a close-up here in a moment. And the last one is uh, a T-pin. So it's kind of like a spool that's been cut in half. Oh, no, he isn't the last one. One more, sorry. And this one is... Trying to figure out what he is exactly. He's got a little... Oh, he's a partial. Okay, I think this was intended as a challenge. It certainly didn't play out that way. He, he felt almost exactly like a stock. I think that split pin on the, la on the very last here that broke apart. Let me use my thumbnail. I don't think he came apart as probably was intended. He acted more like a standard. Anyway, there's what you're looking at, guys. Basically, uh, I'm going to call him a standard, and even though he isn't, I'm going to call him a standard. I don't think he broke apart. So we're dealing basically with spools, or let's see, one, two, three, three and a half spools and two standards. Well, there you go, guys. That it, That is how you attack a Corbin. This one turned out to be a, a little bit odd. This actually is not a true spool. This is a mushroom. It picks exactly like a spool, as you can see. But you can see one side of the um, one side of it's a little thicker than the other. It's almost like a snow cone handle. Anyway, it, it they pick exactly like spools. You can't even tell the difference, quite honestly. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal, William. Thank you, sir, for this not quite standard Corbin Russ one. Thanks, guys.